weighing 250 pounds, the Maritime Zone, the Beast. his way to the ring area is from Kansas City, Missouri, weighing 251 pounds, the king of wrestling, Harley Race. And he is accompanied to the ring area by his manager, Frenchy Martin. And your referee for the match, Bernie Richard. Well, here we are at ringside for what should be a tremendous main event. The Beast in against Harley Race, renewing an old rivalry from years gone by here at the Cocan Arena. The only twist on this particular matchup is the presence of the manager, Frenchy Martin. And you have to be very concerned about the likes of Frenchie Martin being at ringside. Well, to start with, Gary Maxwell, you don't have to worry about Frenchie being there. Hold on a second. I wasn't asking you. I was making an intelligent observation regarding Martin and the threat he possesses as far as interference is concerned. And here goes the beast in against King Harley Race. Yeah, well, nothing you do is intelligent, just like Leo Burke and the rest of these Maritimers. You know, I want to know, how the hell does the referee say I held the rope in that last match? There's no way. I had the man in a Boston Crab. I didn't have to have the outside interference or anything else, just like the King Harley Race won't need Frenchy Martin for no more than moral support. Rotten Ron Starr, obviously frustrated by his repeated failures to gain the international championship belt. Saw on television moments ago, not able to gain the victory over Stompin' Paul Peller. Yeah, but he did give up. He gave up, and everybody in the arena heard it. And just because this Maritimer, Leo Burt, comes in here, thinks he's God or something, comes in and tells the referee something, they switch it like he's the Almighty. Well, I got news for you. As soon as Leo Burt, the Beast, or any of the rest of them want to try Ron Starr, the same thing's going to happen to them that happened to Paul Peller. They're going to give up and beg for mercy. King Harley Race down out of the Ring floor. Do it, Harley. Do it. Good one. And Good one. Into the interview table goes the head of the beast, King Harley Race. Now using the chair on the beast. Stay on him, Harley. Right into the post there, Gear. Let's see what the beast is made of now. Well, I want to. What I want to know is what circus did they get this guy out of to start with? Big knee lift to the beast, and he's got him rocking in a reeling. Great balls of fire, baby. What's it all about? Here's King Harley Race whipping the beast into the ropes, but beast doesn't go down all that easy. Here's a cover attempt, count of two, before King Harley Race is able to kick out. A big boot to the chest. You know, I tell you, I'm, I'm sometimes I wonder about these uh, Klondikes that the beast wears. You know, I kind of think they must be loaded. Oh, a big, a big turnbuckle there, and Harley Race goes backwards over the top rope out onto the concrete floor gear. There you get an idea, Ron Starr, of the strength of the beast. Well, I never denied the man strong. I've been in the ring with him before. I know what he's made of. The man's unbelievably strong. For his size, pound for pound, he's probably one of the strongest men in professional wrestling today. He can take you by one hand and whip you in there, and he's got a big, vicious bear hug that I'm here to tell you'll make a bear give up. Here he is, the beast, with the bear hug. And on King Harley this is the interference I talked about, and oh my, it backfires. What's and going on here, Gary? No. no, 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 no way, no way, no way could that be like that. The Beast, hitting the victory, but now the subject of a vicious tap attack. Tap dance, boys, do it to him. Tap dance on A vicious attack now. What's Burke doing in there? What's Leo Burke doing in there? to the rescue of his brother, the Beast. And now Ron Starr has left the interview table to attack Leo Burke. The Beast is the winner of this match, but that hardly matters at this point, as we've got Jerry Morrow coming into the ring. The rock and roller, Wayne Gillies. Here comes the Cuban assassin. Leo Burke, his head is split wide open. The Beast. Frenchie Martin are going at it in the center of the ring before Frenchie is able to
able to escape. We've got as many as eight or nine wrestlers, and the Beast, his arm raised in victory, has won the match, and as it turns out, the brawl.